Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Zuckerberg, thank you for being uh, here today. You know, you've uh, talked about uh, your very humble beginnings in, in starting uh, Facebook in, in your dorm room, which I appreciated uh, that story. But certainly Facebook has changed an awful lot over a relatively short period of time. When Facebook launched its uh, timeline feature, consumers saw their friends post uh, chronologically as the process. But Facebook has uh, since then changed to a timeline driven by some very sophisticated uh, algorithms. And I think it has left uh, many people, as a result of that, uh, asking, you know, why, why am I seeing this, uh, this feed, uh, and why am I seeing this uh, right now? And now, in light of uh, the, uh, the uh, Cambridge Analytica issue, Facebook users are asking, I think, some new questions right now. Can I believe what I'm seeing? And who has access uh, to this information uh, about me? So I think it's safe to say, uh, very simply, that uh, Facebook is losing the trust uh, of an awful lot of uh, Americans uh, as a result of this uh, incident. And, and I think an example of this is something that I've been hearing a, a lot from folks that have been coming up to me and talking about uh, uh, really kind of an uh, experience they've had uh, where they're having a conversation uh, with friends, uh, not on the phone, just talking, uh, and then they see ads popping up fairly quickly uh, uh, on their Facebook. So I've heard constituents fear that Facebook is mining audio from uh, their mobile devices uh, for the purpose of, of ad targeting, which I think speaks to this lack of trust that we're seeing here. But, uh, and I understand there's some technical issues and logistical issues for that to happen, but for the record, I think it's clear, seeing I hear it all the time, including from my own staff, uh, yes or no, does Facebook use audio obtained from mobile devices to enrich personal information about its users? No. Okay. The, uh, well, Senator, let, let me be let me be clear on this. I mean, so you're you're talking about this um, conspiracy theory that gets passed around that we listen to what's going on on your microphone and use that for ads. Right. We don't do that. To be clear, we do allow people to take videos on their on their devices and um, and share those. And of course, videos also have audio. So um, so we do while you're taking a video. Um, record that and use that to make the service better by making sure that your videos have audio. But I, I mean, that I think is, is pretty clear, but I just wanted to make sure I was exhaustive there. Well, I appreciate that. No. And uh, hopefully that'll dispel a lot of what I've been hearing. So thank you for saying that. Certainly uh, the, uh, today, uh, uh, in the era of uh, mega data, uh, we are finding that data drives uh, everything, including uh, consumer behavior. And so consumer information is probably the most valuable information you can get in the data ecosystem. And certainly folks, as you've mentioned in your testimony here, people like the fact that they can have targeted ads that they're going to be interested in as opposed to being bombarded by a lot of ads that they don't have any interest in. Uh, and that consumer information is important in order for you to tailor that. Uh, but also people are now beginning to wonder, uh, is there an expense to that uh, when it comes to perhaps exposing them to being manipulated or through uh, deception? Uh, you've talked about artificial intelligence. You brought that up uh, many times during your testimony. And I know you're, you've employed some new algorithms to target bots, bring down fake accounts, deal with terrorism, things that you've talked about in this hearing. But you also know that artificial intelligence is not without its risk, and that you have to be very transparent about how those uh, algorithms uh, are constructed. Uh, how do you see uh, artificial intelligence, more specifically, uh, dealing with the ecosystem by helping to get consumer insights, but also keeping consumer privacy safe? Senator, I think the the core question you're asking about AI transparency is a really important one that people are just starting to very seriously study, and that's ramping up a lot. And I think this is going to be a very central question for how we think about AI systems over the next decade and beyond. Right now, a lot of our AI systems um, make decisions in ways that uh, people don't really understand. Right. And I don't think that in 10 or 20 years in the future that we all want to build, um, we want to end up with systems that people don't understand how they're making decisions. So having, doing the research now um, to make sure that, the, that these systems um, can have those principles as we're developing them, I think is certainly a, an extremely important thing. Well, you bring up the, the principles because, uh, as, you, as you're well aware, uh, AI systems, especially in very complex uh, environments when you have machine learning, uh, it's sometimes very difficult to understand, as you mentioned, exactly how those decisions were arrived at. There's examples of how decisions are made in a discriminatory basis, and that it can, can compound if you're not very careful about how that occurs. And so is your company, you mentioned principles, is your company developing a set of principles that are going to guide that development? 
And would you provide details to us as to what those principles are and how they will help uh, deal with this issue? Yes, Senator. I can make sure that our team follows up and gets you the information on that. And we have a whole AI ethics team that is working on developing um, basically the technology. It's not just about philosophical principles. It's also a technological foundation for making sure that this goes in the direction that we want. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Peters. Uh, 